today we're going to go to the Aurora Flea Market and we're gonna just kind of see what they have there. Um, the main focus is going to be on serapes and sombreros. Hopefully I'm able to find some, um, but I'll kind of give you guys like a little tour um, of what's there because it's all new to me too. This documentary is for my Global Village course with Caitlin Luker. The original topic for my field studies topic proposal was originally going to be Japanese food and drink, but I decided against that because it's too broad of a topic. I chose to do my field studies project on sombreros and serapes simply because they're interesting to me and I see them all over the place. I feel like people see serapes and sombreros very often in their daily lives and they don't even think about it. Sombreros and serapes are very commonly found in Mexican restaurants, but I feel like when people go to dine in, they don't really look at their surroundings and think about the origin of these items. I know that I didn't think about the origin of these items before doing this field studies project. I feel I feel that serapes are very commonly found in people's homes, even of people that are not of the Mesoamerican culture. I am not Mexican at all or from any type of Mesoamerican culture, but we also have serapes in our house. Truthfully, before doing this field studies project, I didn't think anything of them and really neither did my family. My family just thought, oh, these are pretty colorful blankets, let's buy them. The serape first came around in around the 1800s, kind of like the mid 1800s time period and the sombrero dates back a long time to like around the 13th century. The sombreros are mostly used for working men um, and they're still used today. They are a little appropriated in American culture because we wear them for like Cinco de Mayo and holidays and not really knowing the origin of it, but normally sombreros are to be worn by working men. Some of the different sombrero types also reflect um, like economic status. Today the serape is used mostly for decorative purposes or for blankets, like for warmth and stuff like that, but back then in the 1800s, 1900s, it was more so used as a fashion statement, kind of like a poncho. Serapes tend to be made out of cotton and they take a long time to make. A lot of them um, in Mexican culture are made by hand. A lot of them here are made in um, a factory or in an industry or something like that, so they just put them out super fast but traditionally they should be made by hand and they come in a huge array of colors and the colors don't necessarily mean anything they're just normally supposed to be very bright colors something interesting that I noticed about sombreros is that you don't really find a lot of women wearing the sombreros because in Mesoamerican culture a lot of men would wind up doing the work and the women are back at home and they're sewing or they're making the serapes or um, you know they're sewing clothes or you know they're cooking or they're doing womenly house duties is um, is what they would wind up doing but serapes are really a unisex item um, I've seen pictures in my research of men wearing serapes or of women wearing serapes um, I don't really notice in the photos a lot of children wearing them. Um, it's almost mostly a adult fashion item. So I have just arrived at the Aurora Flea Market and we are going inside. A lot of places look like they're closed. Hi, Louise. Hi. <laughs> what can you tell me about the sombrero that you know off the top of your head? Well, not exactly where it originated, but the um, idea is uh, originated by the people that work in the fields. 
and some of them try to make it as light as possible, but uh, wide enough to uh, cover the sun. And I guess through time, they should try to make it a little more fancy where they mixed in uh, other materials and make it with different textures and use them for other types of events that they use them. And just it became something traditional for the culture, Mexican in particular. Is this traditional in your household? Do you, um, are these like displayed? Do you wear them? Uh, we wear uh, events brought like if, uh, like if I'm outside in the yard, she's doing work or she's doing a barbecue, mm -hmm. I wear them. And if we have the special events. Would you say that America has appropriated the culture at all of the sombrero, like for holidays or not knowing what they mean and wearing them anyway? I think uh, America, North America has, uh, has tradition of wearing them. It's just funny that there's different um, ideas or styles. Mm -hmm. So the South side of uh, America wears them differently styles and North America has a different style mm. so but yeah America probably just embrace the fact that it's something that probably they have in common you know that even though you come from different countries they do wear similar hats for their uh, events either it's just for casual or for social events do you happen to know if any of the colors for serapes if they mean anything traditionally no i don't think there is a meaning the only thing is like the colors a lot of them they try to represent uh, colors of their state or uh, just the traditional colors of just the flag or or typical with the uh with the flag or any teams or uh, that they are favorite, but it's like red, green, white. I mean, those are the most traditional, and they just mix it in. I think the whole idea is already the uh, poncho, what they call them. That that's that's just what's traditional about it, and then you can do as creative as they can. What's the like normal thing that it's made out of? It's uh, all wool. It's uh, it's something more like a wintry. So that's. That's the only fabric that I probably remember it is. Mm -hmm. All wool. Well, thank you very much, Luis. It was great meeting you. Well, that concludes the video of the East Aurora Flea Market. But field studies project aside, this flea market sold a lot of stuff. I mean, there were shoes, there were like clothing items, there was makeup. A lot of candy, um, a lot of food items and stuff like that. Um, there was there was even a stand where somebody was selling like electronics, like stereos that lit up and stuff like that. Um, it was really cool, honestly. All of like the little knickknacks and all of the stuff that was there. Um, really, if you're in the area, I would highly recommend um, just taking, just stopping by and looking in there and kind of seeing what there is. I mean. There was, a, there was a stand that sold like cactuses and stuff like that. So really, if you're in the area or you're in the surrounding area, um, I really would suggest going and giving it a visit. They're open for a good chunk of time too. So you should realistically be able to fit time in to go visit if, I mean, if that's your thing, if you want to do that. But I believe that they're open from um, 11 or 12 until about 7 or 8 at night. So they're open for a long time. Um, when we went, it was about 5 o'clock and it seemed like a lot of the vendors had closed up for the day. Um, but it looked like they left all their stuff there so they would be back the following day. Um, so realistically, maybe go around 12 or 1 because maybe then all of the stuff would be there. The man that I met inside, uh, Luis, was actually a really, really nice man and he really helped me out a lot and I'm really thankful for all of his help. I really never thought anything about these objects before starting this field studies essay. I thought that it was really interesting going to the Aurora Flea Market and asking questions to the people that were vending these items because a lot of people knew the background of the items that they were vending and it made for a much greater experience. I truthfully really enjoyed this project. Going to the Aurora Flea Market was actually a really fun experience that I would do again 
and I wouldn't have done this originally if it weren't for this project. I think that this field studies project and having to participate in the field studies project is a great way for people to be able to learn more about a specific culture. Now that I've gone to the Aurora flea market once, I definitely think that I'll go back to experience a couple other things. I know some of the people said that as the seasons change, different vendors come in with different things. So I think it would be cool to see what stuff comes in around the beginning of winter and the beginning of the warmer seasons. I think one thing that I would do differently when going to the Aurora flea market or really any different flea market culturally is bring somebody that represents that culture and is maybe able to translate or speak that language. Um, of that culture because since it was so hard to find somebody that could speak English um, I almost felt like a tourist going in there and it was almost it was a little embarrassing maybe saying that I felt like a tourist was a little extreme but it's the only thing that I know to really compare it to but I really do believe all in all that this was a really good experience for me and hopefully for anybody else that participated in the documentary portion or the actual participation portion of the field studies project. I think that it's good to experience new cultures and to open yourself up to new ideas and to different cultures and not just closing yourself up into one. Hopefully this project continues for a while and people are able to reap the benefits of learning about new cultures and making themselves better as a whole. Well, that concludes my field studies documentary on serapes and sombreros. Hopefully somebody learned something and I hope everybody, or at least some of you, goes and visits the Aurora Flea Market. Bye!